Hello everyone, this is Stephanie. Uh, I'm the raised bed guy. I have a degree in horticulture and landscape design. I garden organically in Central Florida and this video will be about gardening during fall in Florida. So I have my uh, tablet right here and um, I have my blog post open just so I can consult and make sure I remember to mention everything that you should know about gardening for in Florida during fall. Uh, and the link to the blog post will be below the video uh, so you guys can check it out if you feel like I didn't cover everything or if you want to just read the blog post. Um, so let's talk about uh, gardening in Florida. Uh, so the first thing is understanding Florida climate, right? Uh, we have very hot summers uh, and I guess the other parts of the year also get pretty hot. Uh, but right now is July 25th. So this means that we are in the middle of the summer. So it's still, still extremely hot and extremely humid. But right now is the ideal time to plan for your fall garden. Um, later in October, which is September, October, which is when we start to transplant our fall garden, temperatures start to decrease a little bit. Um, the rain falls tends to lower a little bit so it's different from summer um, so it's different from summer in that sense however it's still pretty hot um, choosing the ideal spot what is the ideal spot for a vegetable garden um, I always tell the students for my course and anyone that I help with their garden is uh, you have to think about your space in the long run uh, how long do you plan to stay in your location uh, what do you want to plant? What is the goal of your vegetable garden? Uh, the proximity to water, if you have any trees that can uh, shade your garden. Ideally, most most uh, vegetable gardens need six to eight hours of direct sunlight and direct sunlight and not a sunny spot. So the sun has to be directly hitting those plants during six to eight hours. Uh, you can get away. I had to turn off my AC because it's right next to where I'm recording and it was really loud. You can get away with less sunlight for uh, certain vegetables such as leafy greens or uh, lettuces, collard greens and all of that. But most of the vegetables do need uh, that six to eight hours window. And another thing, do not forget that the Florida native soil is extremely sandy. So you have to fix your soil, mend your soil prior to transplanting so the soil will be ready for when you transplant those seedlings. So right now and the next two weeks is a really good time to be mending your soil. So adding compost, adding a, or a organic all-purpose vegetable fertilizer. And uh, I live at the University of Florida. The soil testing, if I'm not wrong, it's only uh, $5. Um, and they have the instructions on their website on how to do it. And that will help you ensure that you will fertilizing your beds or your soil at the appropriate rate. Let's get to the point. I'm dividing the vegetables in two categories. The first half of fall vegetables and the second half of fall vegetables. First half of fall vegetables is the stuff that can handle the heat. The second half is the stuff that needs the temperatures to be a little cooler. So the first half, which is the stuff that we're going to be starting right now, is tomatoes. I recommend the variety uh, black black cherry, uh, sun gold. Um, there is a variety that did really well for us last season. It was a hybrid. It's called Edox F1 and is available at Johnny Seeds. But if you don't want to do hybrids, black cherry seems to be somewhat resistant to root knot nematodes, which are non-segmented microscopic organisms that lives in the soil and causes gall on the roots of the plants and those little uh, knots, I guess. Uh, makes it harder for plants to absorb nutrients and water. Uh, and the Florida soil is very, uh, is full of nematodes. So other things, peppers. Um, I really like Biquinho, uh, which is available at Seed the Stars, uh, Cap 455, which is available at, uh, oh my goodness. I know the, the owner of the farm, it's at Josh. The name of, of his farm is, Cody Co Farm. Um, he has uh, the Cap 455 and Cherosa. He also has that one. That one is my all time favorite. Great to add to beans, to rice, 
to meat. It's like one of my favorite peppers. And the first one and last one, Piquinho and Cheirosa, they're both from Brazil, which is where I am from. Third thing, uh, uh, butternut squash and squashes in general. Now is a great time to start them. Uh, you can do um, the Florida adapted um, squash. Uh, most hybrid varieties of zucchini, uh, you can do them right now, and I recommend hybrid for zucchini if you can, uh, just because zucchini, they're very prone to powdery mildew, and powdery mildew is a fungal disease that normally you see on the leaves of the plant. It looks like a white powder has been sprayed, uh, added to the leaves of the plants. So zucchini and most cucurbits, they're very prone to powdery mildew, so that's why I recommend a hybrid uh, variety. Uh, cucumbers, uh, you can be doing the next weeks or, or so. And this is valid, I would say, for almost the whole Florida. Um, for South Florida, I would still wait maybe two weeks for everything, just because South Florida doesn't really have a real winter and it's still pretty hot there. Um, and for cucumber, you can do quirky, which is a hybrid variety. And I really liked it because it's resistant to powdery mildew and to a few other things. And it was such a a good cute variety. Uh, Market More 76, that, those two cucumber varieties, they are available at Johnny Seeds. Uh, Eggplant Orient Express is a good variety, but generally speaking, most eggplants will do well right now. Uh, beans, I recommend Cody Cope Farm uh, Bean Mix because it's a land race and he has been breeding uh, those beans for a while and they do well in Florida. Uh, for the second half, which will be September and onward, uh, carrots, uh, you can do a new Karuda, Bolero. New Karuda is, you cannot go wrong with new Karuda. Uh, I think it's resistant to root non nematode, uh, and it's just a very good carrot, very easy to grow. I do grow the rainbow carrot, so I grow all the colors, but if I could pick the easiest one, the best one, it probably would be new, new Karuda. Uh, for beets, uh, Detroit Dark Red and Choga, I don't know how to pronounce, I'm sorry, I'm Brazilian, but that name is too complicated. Uh, those are good, but I have had a lot of problems growing beets in Florida. That's the only thing that I cannot really grow well. I can grow a few, but they are very tiny. Uh, and every single vegetable that I grow, if you haven't seen my videos, they're huge. They're, they're great. Uh, but I believe it has to do with the pH of the soil. So we'll be trying again and correcting the pH to see if that works better. Uh, cauliflowers, I really like Purple of Sicily, and that one is available at Baker's Creek. Uh, I believe it's a Harlem variety, if I'm not wrong, uh, but you can try really any variety. Um, I would recommend trying to see some uh, more like heat resistant varieties. Uh, for collard greens, I have no preference, me particularly. Uh, not a big fan of collard greens, so that's why I have no preference, but I'm pretty sure there are many varieties that will do better in Florida. Uh, Brussels sprouts, no preference, uh, but if you had to choose one, I would look for ones that uh, will be uh, rich maturity sooner because Brussels sprouts is a really long season uh, crop. Uh, for kale, I recommend Black Magic. Uh, for cabbage, ca Caraflex, it was a really good one for us. Uh, for broccoli, Piracicaba broccoli, for that one, I'll keep repeating the same thing. That's the best broccoli that I have ever grown. It's so prolific, it tastes so good, it can handle the heat well. So maybe you could even start, I don't know, for Central and North Florida, I would say this week. You could uh, uh, try it because Piracicaba broccoli was bred in Brazil and it can do, it can handle uh, up to 85 degrees. So that's a really heat resistant variety. Um, Lettuce, Momoa, and Jericho. Jericho was bred in Israel, and Momoa, I think it was bred in uh, Hawaii. And both are heat resistant, but again, it's like heat resistant, but Florida is really hot, so I would wait until September and October to plant them. Uh, cilantro, slow boat cilantro. Um, it just uh, takes longer to bolt. Uh, parsley, moss curled. Parsley, this variety is available at Baker's Creek. I uh, was a great variety. For onions, Walla Walla and Texas White. Uh, so for onions, you have to ensure that you get uh, short day onions, if I'm not wrong. I'm pretty sure short day onions. Um, and those two varieties did really great uh, with us. And I'm gonna put a video here of uh, the ones that we grew. 
um, for garlic in, in, in chili and red. Uh, that's a variety that I have been growing and that's a variety that our friend David has grown for the past four years and he said is the best performing one. The only thing about garlic, you have to get vernalized garlic. So garlic needs a minimum of 40 nights or 40 degrees and under to properly boil. Florida, generally speaking, we don't get those 40 nights of 40 degrees and under. So we have to mimic that process. And the way that we normally mimic that process is by adding the garlic into the fridge uh, for about uh, six to 12 weeks before planting them into the uh, ground. There are a lot of vendors that they'll sell the pre-vernalized garlic, but if you don't want to buy the pre-vernalized, you can buy them right now and they should ship, I think, by October, and then you vernalize them yourself. Uh, David from Practical Plants sells the vernalized uh, garlic. For radishes, daikon is the easiest one for Florida, but really you can try any one. I have had, had great success with all of the uh, radishes varieties. For a Swiss chard, no preference. Uh, for, for potatoes, the best performing one for us was Early Valley. And I have a video on growing potatoes here on YouTube and I also have a blog post and you're gonna see one of the potatoes that we harvested was three pounds. Uh, and, and they were all early valley and they just did great. Uh, I think we planted them on October, harvested them in January maybe, I don't remember. Uh, so yeah, you can plant them on October. Uh, if we do get a bad frost, you might need to harvest them. But if we get a light frost, normally mounding uh, takes care of them. So yeah, so I, I talked about soil and preparation. The next thing, water and irrigation. Ensure that you have a irrigation system set up, um, especially if you wanna take gardening serious, seriously because plants need water. Florida soil is generally poor. Even the raised bed uh, uh, soils, they tend to not be the greatest because the composition happens so quickly here and the soil tends to, to uh, get really sandy really quickly. So it is important that your plants have irrigation so they can grow and be the size that they should be and produce as much as they should produce. Um, I have a blog post on setting up drip irrigation system and that's the system that I recommend. Uh, it's the most water efficient system, it utilizes about 90% of the water that it takes and also it helps reduce uh, a lot of uh, pathogens such as powdery mildew. Uh, and providing shade. So for example, I will be starting my uh, brassicas, which is cauliflower, uh, collard greens, kale, brussels, uh, broccoli. I will be starting all of that in September, which is a little earlier. Uh, and normally in mid around mid-October, I'll be transplanting that into the ground. And mid-October is still pretty hot to be transplanting directly on the garden. So what I do, I put a shade cloth on all my brassicas. And the last thing is, I'm sharing the, my perspective, which is the perspective of somebody that has a academic background in horticulture and, and someone that has been growing vegetables and other stuff in Florida for a few years. Uh, but I don't know everything. So there are things that I still don't know and there's things that I'm still learning. Um, so, always experiment with stuff always look for new varieties and try new things see what it works the things that i share they are general guidelines but they can be adjusted for example i can start stuff earlier than most because i have a, in, a indoor growing station so if i wanted i could even start uh, my uh, brassicas maybe like mid next month mid august because I can't keep them inside for at least eight weeks before I have to transplant them outside, but that now might be true for everyone. Uh, and if you're starting your stuff for seed, make sure you get uh, a mix, a soil mix that's for seedlings. Uh, make sure you're watering them. Uh, make sure you're planting them at the right depth and make sure you're not leaving them in direct sunlight because most of those cells, they're really tiny and they dry really quickly and the seeds, they either die before they have the chance to germinate or they die as they germinate because they are not ha holding moisture as they should because they dry up really quickly. 
Uh, so yeah, try to uh, start your seedling somewhere, like maybe under a tree that's not getting as, as, as much sun. And then as they grow, you can start to harden them off to direct sunlight before you transplant them into where you're gonna plant your garden. Uh, I hope this video was helpful and I apologize for being repetitive or not and for not being as eloquent as I would like to be. Uh, again, I am Brazilian, I'm not American, so I do have an accent and uh, my English sometimes is not as clear as I would like to be. But I hope this video was helpful and if you would like to learn more, I have uh, more links uh, under this video. Bye-bye.